Hi, this is Greg Abston from the Laser Training Institute of Professional Medical Education Association. Welcome to our short video series on medical laser training. In today's inanimate laser lab, we're going to take a look at some of the uh, tissue effects of the Homium YAG laser, a pulsed laser. Uh, these are some of the exercises that we might have um, residents do in their medical training just to learn the general effects of the lasers and the fibers at high and low energy settings just to see what they do and to be able to control them. So today we get to play with a few things here. Ah, we have a raw egg. Let's see if we can break that eggshell without breaking the membrane underneath. And it is raw, and at the end I'll show you that. Uh, let's look at something else, like a small little tomato, and we'll see if we can gently vaporize the skin off of that. And then let's turn to soft tissue and hard tissue. So we have a piece of chicken here with uh, meat, uh, bone and cartilage and you'll be able to see the different effects of high versus low energy and fast pulse rates when you do this. Now in these labs I'm not wearing uh, laser safety glasses. That's up to your own laser safety officer. The nominal hazard zone on these homium yags is very small. If you won't burn your skin, which I would not even at this distance, if it doesn't burn your skin, it doesn't burn the surface of your eye. Uh, the maximum permissible exposure levels are the same and this laser does not get into your eye so it doesn't concentrate. So don't confuse that with other lasers that do. That's a, a totally different story. But let's fire this up and start to look at these effects. I have the laser set uh, to give you a photoacoustic effect, a high concussive effect. Uh, it's set at 2500 millijoules or 2.5 joules at six times a second. That results in an average power of 15 watts. Um, remember, it's the joules energy that really does the work, not the average power. I have an egg uh, inside this basin of water and I'm going to bring the fiber up and I'm going to try to get this so the camera can see it um, right up close to the fiber. Now as I do that, it won't have really any effect at all when it's just a few millimeters away um, because this fiber creates a little steam bubble at the end of the tip. It's so fast in 350 microseconds that you can't see it, but that little steam envelope creates the space where it can do its uh, concussive effects. Uh, and it just fragments the, the hard eggshell apart, but it does not affect the soft membrane below. So sort of like uh, taking apart a kidney stone. All right, I've got the laser set on 2.5 joules, and let's see what I can do. First, I'm gonna start firing, and I'm away from the egg itself. All right, it's popping in there, but it's not really doing anything. Now let's get closer. Oh yeah, there it is. The popping's more. I see little fragments of eggshell start to go away. But I, I really have to touch the tip of the fiber on the eggshell itself but I can't push it through that soft membrane. Okay, let's pull that out. We'll put the laser in standby. And then I'll take a close up of this so that you can see it a bit better. Okay, so it fragments hard objects like the eggshell, but it won't hurt the soft membrane underneath unless you physically poke that uh, fiber right through there. Uh, which means a homium YAG laser is good on hard tissue like bone and cartilage to make uh, osteotomies, to work in uh, arthroscopy. Uh, for uh, cartilage in the knee and in other locations and in back work uh, for the spine itself. So that's using high energy and a low number of times per second to work. Let's switch over to the piece of chicken and compare the two effects, high energy versus low energy. Oops, I almost forgot. I was going to show you that I was not cheating here. This is not a boiled egg. This is actually a raw egg. So let's see if I can do this without getting too much of a mess on me and around here some. So let's just break that open. Oh yeah, I think you can see that that is a raw egg and we were able to do that without bursting the membrane itself. 
All right, now let's look at the effects on soft tissue, uh, like dissecting versus hard tissue, like bone. Now at this point, I still have it set up to the high settings, 2.5 joules and six times per second. Before we were working underwater, uh, that keeps the tip of the fiber cool and the plastic doesn't ball up. Here we're in air, as if you were doing, a, let's say a laparoscopy um, or some type of uh, pulmonary endoscopy, you're in air. Well, these high energies really will mess up the tip. We're going to do that anyway just to show you what the effects are. What you would do is actually turn your jewel setting uh, down when you're using it in those kinds of air applications. Here um, I've got it ready to go and we're going to come through the soft tissue. Remember the rule of thumb for doing any kind of dissection with a laser fiber is you never push forward through it. If you do that you'll perforate and penetrate all the way through. You always drag it backwards or sideways so that you don't perforate. Now I'm going to do this but watch how explosive it is on tissue. You can hear the popping that it makes as well. All right, it does a good job when it does that. All right, I'm going to stop and uh, take a picture of this as a close-up and uh, also uh, uh, section it with a scalpel so you can see how much coagulation damage was created. All right, now let's do the same thing at a lower setting. This time, we turned our energy down to 600 uh, millijoules, or six tenths of a joule, and took the time up to 10 times per second on here. This is more of what you would be doing in uh, soft tissue. So let's put it down beside of it. We'll do this again and then compare it. All right, I'm going to stop uh, and get a close-up picture for you. Okay, now let's experiment a little bit on hard tissue, uh, both on the bone itself and a little cartilage around here. Right now, I still have this on the low energy setting, 600 millijoules, 10 times uh, per second to pulse. Let's see what it does to both. And in this case, um, in performing osteotomies, sometimes you can push forward with a fiber in order to achieve that. But just remember, you better control it because whatever is behind where you're going is going to be ablated and vaporized. All right, here I'm over top of the bone. Um, I hit the laser. All right, it works, but it's very slow. Let's go down to the cartilage itself. All right, it, it works as well. Let me stop and get a close-up picture, but usually you would not do hard tissues at these kinds of low energy settings. All right, now I have the settings up to one and a half joules at 10 times per second. That would be typical for, uh, let's say, uh, doing decompression of a, an intervertebral disc to take pressure off of a pinched nerve. So let's look at it on bone and then also on the cartilage. I'm just gonna go right above the spots I did before. All right, and now let's move over to cartilage. Much quicker when it does that. Um, that ablates uh, and takes out bone and cartilage. In actual uh, use, you would probably be irrigating at the same time with this. Let me stop and I get a close up. Okay, we're going to have a little bit of fun now playing with some hard candy and pretending that they're kidney stones and breaking them up. So, I have some uh, nerds candy here. Maybe that name is appropriate. You know, sometimes they think us uh, working in the laser labs are technical nerds, so I guess it's only appropriate we use nerd candy. Uh, so, we've got those in a beaker. I have some clean water to put it in. Um, and the laser is right now set at 1.2 joules, 10 times per second.
for an average power of 12 watts. Now, in terms of stones, we're not really getting into that right here, but there are two ways to do it. This way um, is more of a fragmentation of the stone itself. I think that's how some of the companies refer to it, and it actually breaks apart the stone. It's not the power that does it, it's the energy per pulse, but you have to have a slow coordinated hand speed so that the stone doesn't keep jumping away from you. The other way to do it that we're not going to demonstrate on this machine is something they call the dusting technique, where you take your energy down lower actually, but you do it at a very fast rate so that your average power actually comes up. Well, in that case, you're not really fragmenting the stone by itself. They call it dusting because as it rolls around, you see what looks like dust coming off the outside of it, and eventually the, the stone will disintegrate. So there are two basic techniques. Here we're going to demonstrate the fragmentation and show what the problem is with um, making sure the fiber tip is in close proximity to that stone before you step on the pedal. All right, in my pan of water, I'm going to uh, drop a couple of these little pieces of rock candy. Now, I can't let them sit in there too long or the water itself will start to dissolve them, but they stay hard long enough for us to demonstrate this. The key to this is that the fiber or the tip of the fiber has to be right on the stone. The common mistake that uh, many physicians make is they start firing the laser while it's two or three millimeters out. Well, that doesn't do anything. All that does is create a little steam bubble that you can't see and it just keeps kicking the stone out. So let me demonstrate that. I'm going to hit one of these stones and I'm not going to get right up to it, but I'm going to show you how it knocks it around. You see, it really doesn't do anything because the water is protecting the stone uh, and the, the laser can't go through the water. It can only work within the steam envelope, which means you have to get right on the stone touching it before you fire. All right, I'll do a close-up so you can see the fragments, but that took care of the situation immediately. And if people would just slow down, make sure that the fiber tip is up against the stone, they'll get immediate results and they won't be kicking the, the uh, can down the road, which is what happens if you get too impatient and go too fast. We're going to try this now on um, a tomato to see if we can vaporize the skin of the tomato and what effects we might get at high energy versus low energy. Now in these demonstrations, what I've been doing is using uh, essentially a hollow sucker to put the bare fiber through. Uh, that just allows me to handle it more easily um, with my fingers. Um, some of the companies call these endostats and there are different ways to deliver labor, laser fibers, but it's just the bare fiber. It's simply delivered um, through some sort of uh, handpiece or probe itself. So I'm going to start again at, um, well let's just continue on at 1.2 joules at 10 times per second and see what kind of effect we get with that. Let's get a close-up picture of that for you. Now I've turned it down to 600 millijoules or six tenths of a joule at uh, 12 times per second for 7.2 watts average power. All right, let's stop and get a picture. Now let's use a setting which we should not be doing in open air because it messes the fiber tip up, but we'll deal with that. We're at uh, 2.5 joules at eight times per second, and let's see what effect we're gonna create with this. That's actually splattering me in the face. Let's stop and take a picture. 
Okay, the point of this is not to teach you to use the correct settings on a laser to take the skin off of, an, of a tomato at the grocery store. All right, we're looking at trends. The point here is to see the trends and how this works. The Homium YAG laser can have acoustical shockwave effects that are explosive and use those more in cartilage and bone, kidney, uh, kidney stones, hard tissue. Um, it also can be used for soft tissue dissection, but you don't want that kind of acoustical shock wave. You want a uh, smoother and utilize more of the thermal effect to gently vaporize. So here you see that. On the left, we started at 1.2 joules. And that's still kind of high to be using in air. And you can see it with the uh, rough edges uh, around the vaporization. In the middle, though, when we turn it down to 6 tenths of a joule, all of a sudden we're getting a smoother and less concussive effect and probably typically in soft tissue 400 to 800 millijoules might be typical way on the other side at two and a half joules uh, that's just way too high for anything but it's done here just to demonstrate where you're going it's an explosive effect and even uh, splattered that tomato right up into my face so once you decide the effect you want, just look at the trends, you know, pick a spot, see what's happening, and then take it up or take it down as needed.